Thank you very much. And uh, he just listened to a young girl who was saying that the Nigerian community here is totally very angry. Go on, go gather, uh, destroy their food. The later, uh, with the waiting camp and, uh, and uh, that other camp, no compensate everybody. We shall be in a key generation sometimes. Today, I'm hoping we can be in the style of teaching flat a poison writer, and we shall also be very interested in this point at more than two. footprints of these great lives on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening, you're welcome to the program Green Planet. We should approach a sustainable development. Uh, I shall be presenting a paper called How Africa Should Approach a Sustainable Development. A few things about me, that's my picture. I'm the director of African Center for Community and Development. I visited Cambridge Wood School since 2010. And these are some links that you can visit. Um, some of my works and academic contributions and the work of this organization as well. And you can contact me on this as well. So, we shall be tracing the road to sustainable development. The 1987 United Nations Frontline Report considered the term as development which meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The United Nations 2005 World Summit Outcome Document considered the quotes interdependent and mutually reinforcing pillars of sustainable development as economic development, social development, and environmental protection. United Nations Feminine Forum on Indigenous Issues and the Convention on Biological Diversity added a cultural dimension to sustainable development. The Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity UNESCO 2001 propounds, in quotes, cultural diversity is as necessary for humankind as biodiversity is for nature. Actually, this is very important because we can not be concerning um, ecosystems when there are so many other tribal communities that are facing threats of extinction. The road to sustainable development continues. Agenda 21 advocated for information, integration, and participation as cornerstones to achieving development that could guarantee resources now and in the future. And basically, that's why we are all here, because we want to participate in the process of establishing strategic um, policies for sustainability in this part of our world. What noting is the fact that green development has been advocated to be part of the definition of sustainable development as much as it has been opposed as being too environmentally focused while neglecting the social, economic and cultural dimensions of sustainable development. This is also very vital because most people have narrowed the meaning of sustainable to green and in most cases we face difficulties of extrapolating that sustainability can extend into other dimensions of social and even business life. Defining sustainable development. While admitting the wide usage of sustainable development in almost all fields, for the purpose and the context of this presentation, I have accepted the Wikipedia definition. Sustainable development is a pattern of resource use that aims to meet human needs 
while preserving the environment so that these needs can be met not only in the present but also for future generations. The term was used by the Bonham Commission, which coined what has become the most often quoted definition of sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So, sustainable development can thus today be expressed as the development device that integrates long-term economic development, social development, environmental protection, and cultural protection as key pillars of design, delivery, and management. So how should Africa go? Before discussing specifics, it is likely that any meaningful intervention for sustainable development in Africa should be pro-poor. Pro-poor because we have been represented rightfully and sometimes denigrated as a very poor continent, and therefore our preoccupation should be to get out of poverty or even the poverty mentality that has kept many people thinking they are poor even when they have the resources to develop themselves. It must be people-based. People-based means that it must come from the people and it should be um, the sum total of what people need that has influenced the policy and it should lead to people having more well-being, be it objective or subjective well-being. It must also be interest-based. Are we designing interventions that defend our interests? Or are we just in a kind of bilateral relationship that things are dictated upon? Earlier on, I did mention about conservation um, policies worldwide and their impact on Africa. Are Africans just receiving aspects of conservation that have been handed down to them? Or are we actually in the limelight because we are shaping these policies? Those are things we need to put into place. Are we powerful stakeholders in institutions that define politics, polit um, politics and policies in international uh, organizations, or we are not? Interventions must also think about the long-term good. The long-term good means we must think in advance, and the best way to think in advance is to have research about now and to have a way of getting to the future based on calculable and sometimes profound theories that can be proven as beneficial to peoples. You can look at the Western world, they were hit by a financial crisis, but their institutions have been able to get out of it, even though all are not out, but they have the institutions to be able to get out of the crisis that they find themselves. So we should be able to recycle crisis situations by establishing institutions and business and eco-friendly interventions that look at the long-term benefit of our societies. We have to be eco-friendly, eco stands for ecologically friendly, and we should look at the abundance of natural resources that we have as a way of empowering ourselves and to establish some kind of eco-monopolies here um, so that we should be people who dictate what happens in terms of policy and in the enjoyment of the environment, not necessarily people who conserve it for tourists who come from out of our countries and our region to benefit from it. We must be active partakers. Pursuing black economic empowerment movement in South Africa is something that we should try to read about and to think about it for Cameroon. Um, how should Africa go? We have to be entrepreneurial. We have to think about business. Most people think when you're a non-governmental organization, it means you shouldn't do business. Most people think when you're a civil society organization, it means you should not have a way of growing. You must have ways of marketing yourself and empowering yourself with tools that you design while doing community work. That is the only way you keep yourself floating while you help others to get out of poverty. If you are not entrepreneurial, you actually sink. And what happens? We have more vertical and horizontal inequalities because people who are supposed to shape 
policies and the lives of other people find themselves in immediate poverty. So it's also something we need to greatly consider. Socially motivated approaches are also very necessary in Africa. Uh, there seems to be a modern disjoint between socially motivated policies for Africa and what prevails now. We are facing a, a problem or a, the benefit of modernization, but we must also look back at history to understand that our societies are founded on socially motivated cultures and so on. And in a way, if we think about the social, we'll be thinking about the people-based solutions to issues that I mentioned first. And if you are thinking about the people-based solutions, it therefore means you'll be protecting the interests of the people in designing your project. And if you are protecting the interests of the people, then you have a long-term strategic plan for these people so that they can continuously live and outlive themselves. That carries us to strategic and targeting global and regional standards. I would have said strategic standards or strategic global standards, but I want to say that development interventions or any interventions um, that take place in regions also have a regional specific dimension. And so sometimes if you do not look at the fact that it is taking place in Africa, you, you lose sight as to how you can implement it. So for us to approach sustainable development here, we need to have some kind of standards that come from Africa. Um, recently, China created um, its own EEE rating um, for its companies. This is because Western world had continuously put Chinese um, businesses and organizations below the ratings of their own organizations. And in the long run, or in terms of business, it was only but logical or clear that people would only do business with European um, companies because they were only the companies that were listed. So a way of fighting it is to have another standard, a regional standard of looking at things uh, without necessarily cutting off from their own standard, but doing things in a way that if their own standards can put you in, they could be an alternative to issues. Or else, we we'll find ourselves being victims of the dictates from outside. And to me, we cannot be strategic and sustainable without a big dose of independence. So we must have alternative long-term strategies. Alternative long-term strategies mean that when you have your strategies, we should be able to look at the possibility that people also are strategizing on our strategies. So if our strategies are failing, therefore we should have ways of changing what we've already programmed and that's the cause of flexibility and redesigning and evolution. And to me, I believe the easiest way to get there is through IT, through technological advancement and industrialization. And we should have regional specific technologies that are based on our realities. And uh, I was very happy with um, Dr. Yabi yesterday when he was talking about the solar um, dryers. If we can vulgarize them, uh, it will be good for our society because I know that in a couple of years, um, West Indies, Sundance, solar dryers will propagate themselves here and will be active users of these technologies. And it, it, I think from the macroeconomic standpoint, we shall be feeding those economies that have produced these technologies unknowingly, whereas we already have people within us that we can use what they know to add value to our lives and also to impact on our balance of payment. And uh, Africa should approach sustainable development based on proven, unbiased research and planning right-based and just approaches, bounded by fair-based partnerships. We should not be underdogs always. We should also strive at capacity building. Capacity building, I think this is very vital in areas that we have um, technical assistance, like in development management. 
in many cases, you find corporations um, headed by people who come out of the continent, and maybe they are not as qualified as those who are here. But because the, the financial dynamics comes from outside, there is power from outside, and also because they are probably, uh, <laughs> apparently, are more trained, we find it difficult to be able to help these organizations. And if those of you who are working projects, you, you end up not earning the same amount of money with people who have the same qualifications mm -hmm. like you. So Africa's development must also be technologically geared. And we must own basic services like education, healthcare, transportation, basic utilities, and security. If you do not own your education, you cannot defend yourself. If you have been um, put into stereotypes on who you are, it is likely that you grow up to defend these stereotypes. So we must open up our minds. Uh, one way is to look at um, primary education. I think this is the time for us to open up to issues like ethics, not necessarily religion. You cannot model children to think that um, everyone must be a Christian or everyone must um, be traditional. You make children to think for themselves in that they grow up to have a mind that is curious. And I want to be talking about some of these things in detail. pro poor. Uh, many mistake poor people as inactive and lazy and willing to benefit always from charity. This is wrong, as the Han and Zoomers state that they are active partakers in development and in economy. And it's not only them to say that we ourselves are witnesses to the fact that there are many poor people there who are taking care of families and sending their children to universities and they are not, act they are not inactive because for long the way it has been designed for developing countries has always been sold as, as though these people are inactive and if these stipends don't come down, these people will be extinct. So it's a way of trying to understand it. Pro poor African devices must seek to integrate poor efforts in the national economies by investing in services that facilitate movement from poverty into a vibrant middle class and a prosperous wealthy class thereon. These services include education, tax breaks for small and medium businesses, subsidizing agriculture and fisheries, healthcare, provision of basic utilities, training in ICTs, and enabling justice and security for all. Using the resources of the poor and of the state to develop and empower the poor is helpful as it will add value to the economy and increase spending in the long run. Both factors are vital for economic growth. Recent vibrant middle classes have been noted in China, India, Brazil, and Russia, in what is now referred to as the Greek states. And craft farming and um, the production of streams and so on are very minimal. We have to consider these issues because it's not only that we enjoy eating streams as a people, but we can really make money as a country by exporting these, these streams, crafts, and so on to, to foreign countries. So I think industrialization, research and development, bioengineering, and biotechnology are things that we must put into, into place. Marketing and image branding Africa as a veritable partner for business and not a cradle of unsustainable wars will increase cash flows and investments into Africa. This will be best with good governance and reform of financial institutions into more business and accountable systems. Yeah, um, a lot of people look at Africa as a place where uh, we have just wars, we have social divides, um, corruption, there's no peace and so on. But you bear with me that many of us are happy and we can count the conflict areas in Africa and they don't translate into all the regions of Africa and we also know the causes of wars and they're not always caused by Africans and even when they're caused by Africans we cannot use a micro picture 
to interweave the bigger picture. So what I'm seeing here is that we need to image brand Africa. We need to sell ourselves. We need to sell what we are doing. And the easiest way for us to do that is to get ourselves into the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web, you should not be in development management and you don't have a website. It is a priority. You need a website. You need to see the things you are doing. You need to source for funding. You need to have a collaborative agenda with all the NGOs. So it is very vital that if you are doing something in development management, you need a website. And later on, when we must have had first um, internet here, it's going to be possible for companies called by Skype for you to talk to business people out there based on the fact that they are attracted to the things you do. So if you don't put yourself um, in, in the map, it will be very difficult. And there are also free internet um, sites for posting. Most people think it's difficult to have a site that you don't be. For them, it is possible to, to, to check a couple of, even in this community, I think you can have a site there about the activities you're doing. And if you regularly publish, it's also going to help the image brand you and to also put you into the limelight. Education on business strategies across subpopulations is vital. We need business universities and capacity building training on relevant development based subjects must be accessible in African institutions in order to build a skill base necessary for sustainable development and growth. Strategic research and planning. Strategic research takes time and resources to find out best tools and policies for Africa while ensuring the tools also reflect the interests of African people and the protection of resources now and in the future. Strategic planning ensures that strategic research is modeled into possible positive long-term devices that will assuage needs now and also provide for future needs. Strategic planning translates into effective implementation and evaluation devices that are poor for. Many people usually say it is about Africa, but Africa is not in an island. We are competing with people we are in the same time and space, with people in America, in Germany, and we were not in this planet in 1960. We were here a couple of billions of years, like the ancestors and so on, and there's no more any reason for us to, to quantify or qualify ourselves as people who are supposed to be benefiting some aspects of development. We need everything. We need internet. We don't just need internet. Actually, we need fast internet to upload whatever we want. It's a right. It's no longer a, it's a right to have telephones in government offices. It is needed. It's no longer something that is a privilege. And I don't think it's supposed to be limited to having it in the, in, in, in the offices of directors and so on. We need to make it accessible to, to, to children, to people, and so on. In cost-saving strategies and in cost-saving instruments, we should not be telephoning in Cameroon more expensive than European countries if we have actually had good negotiations with the providers um, in terms of these packages. So the inference from strategic research, planning and management is that Africa must be prepared to resist shocks and stresses now and in the future. It also intimates that present instruments like Millennium Development Goals or conservation approaches that have not greatly worked or have been extended give reason to question the research, planning, implementation, use and the strategic content of the devices so far. This is not to say MDGs have not worked in some few places, but it only reiterates the need to understand if conflicts in resource-rich areas are too accidental to be coincidences, or whether success is related to economic interests of certain stakeholders, or whether the research, planning, and delivery was originally sick in the first place. Were these tools strategic for Africa? That's why I say real strategic research Planning and management of African development is thus vital for sustainable development. Real means we don't, we don't fake development. 
we should be able to see that it is real. If you want something, uh, let's say we have a scarcity um, in milk, we have to farm cattle that is going to produce this milk. If we don't farm the cattle, we cannot assume that a few people who are farming cattle have gone through this um, process and are able to feed the whole country um, just by having a couple of cows. You know, we need to do a process that looks at how to get to satisfying people who don't have access to milk. And this takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of research, it takes a lot of resources, and it takes a lot of transparency. So we need to step up our research and planning for man and management of Africa for sustainable development. And I've mentioned proven, unbiased <coughs> research and planning. This refers to research that has that has been objectively reviewed to be free of the meddling or interests of donor countries, business groups, powerful nations and non-governmental organizations, investors within and outside the country. So, research, um, it sometimes is a contradiction in terms to have somebody who is um, exploiting your timber and then he's also in the, in, in the board of a conservation uh, unit. It just speaks for itself that it's going to be influencing policies there, whereas it's also a, a, an exponent of the problems you're facing. That's just an example. Proven on biased research and planning can only work if Africa develops institutions within an outside government that are credible and are accepted to work for the interests of Africa. It calls for more independent parliaments, civil society, scholars, universities and research institutions, freedom of expression and democracy, good governance and the embedding of technologies for maximum, maximum use towards African sustainable development. Africa must learn from advanced economies while maintaining her cultural and regional integrity, so as being the case of ancient countries. The technological approaches and global and regional standards. I've mentioned the need for uh, technologies here, that we also need to have our own standards here in Africa so that sometimes when we are cut off from global standards, we can also have a way of asserting ourselves that this is based on what we have established. And as such, it will be possible for these people to also respect us as a, as a, as a race, as a continent, and as a region, like how the Asiatic countries are doing. In Africa, we have mobile device in the phone sector, it shouldn't be like that, between the rich and the poor, the rural and the urban entrepreneurs, and so on. Yeah. It makes it impossible for someone who is a farmer in a rural area, um, with a farmer, let's say, in an urban area, a small urban farm, to compete. If one man monitors the markets of his products and can tell the phone and understand these issues, while another man is cut off because of the fact that he cannot just telephone. So this mobile device are very visible. Actually, a study on cotton industries in Nigeria revealed that it has been affecting a lot of farmers of cotton, and it actually helps to make the map the market the way it is. It helps to empower those who are closer to city centers, and it helps to make those who are further off more poor. African regional standards in the use of ICTs are low, hence it should be the strategic interest of governments to improve on access and to negotiate on better service partnerships with providers than what prevails today, marked by slow internet services. Also, technologies are in themselves innovative, and mastering them puts countries in levels that they can understand and compete with forces coming with more advanced strategies. If you look at TVs, you realize that we are facing, like in the car industry, a lot of dumping. Um, mostly only um, used cars come here. We assume that's what we should have, naturally. And we, people are talking now of high definition and 3D TVs. We are still somewhere in analog and the first generation of um, digital TVs. 
and when they move on, they are going to send this batch of technologies to us. And what happens? We will master what is um, long, outdated, and when we meet on the platform, we need to show what we know. They will generally have an urge because we are not on the same footwork with them. So we must have our own strategies to compete globally while understanding the difficulties we face as a region. Local ownership of resources. We must own the creation and delivery of basic services. We cannot expect that money to, to educate your, your kids to come from loans with the World Bank environment. It is your duty to, to, to educate your child. You should own it. We should not be asking for loans for healthcare. We should own healthcare. That needs investment, but that is what we need. Any other approach is only going to lead us to be beggars, like we are in many cases now. There are some simple questions we can ask. If Africa owns healthcare, how much will it save from not being wholly dependent on foreign health products? If Africa owns has security provision, how much will it save from not spending on military services from outside? While it can hardly own these factors today, it is suggested that Africa improves on their ownership to have an enabling, secure environment for her strategic, sustainable development. Possible difficulties on the road to African sustainable development. The definition of sustainable development remains diverse and users of the concept have added corporate sustainability to its meaning. The latter does not always guarantee efficient use of resources. Right? You just saw the golf spill issue and if we were to de depend on what the oil companies are talking about their policies, on paper it would be like they have very sound environmental policies. So, Corporate sustainability is some kind of measure that companies seek and strategize on how to image brand themselves as being eco-friendly or, or environmentally friendly. And if you base your judgments on these without going through to really understand whether they are actually um, eco-friendly, we will be misleading ourselves. And like in the, in, in the Niger Delta, where um, all the oil is being drilled with metals that have been banned since the 70s in other European countries. Another issue comes from a question of who actually benefits from sustainable development. Is it countries that depleted their environment already and are enjoying the goods of industrialization or poor remote countries? Does Africa benefit as much as it conserves her resources? It's another question we need to answer. Also, immediate poverty affects transition into sustainable development in Africa. Governments spend too much on poverty while neglecting modernization. Many countries are also indebted from loans and spend their GDP paying loans instead of investing on strategies for sustainable development and strategic management of Africa, her peoples, and her resources. This has raised issues on whether it is still a linchpin or a tool for development. I think that's why you have people like Ndambisa Muyu coming in and Ori Okoro talking for Riley for the need for us to talk about entrepreneurial devices for development for Africa. Another issue is having the right balance between the need for Africa to develop sustainably and current emergencies like poverty, malnutrition, drought, and the fallouts of climate change or between the business strategies of Western countries, emerging countries, and the plights of African peoples. So, as, as China really comes to stay, or to really take us out of our... <laughs> we need to really reconsider those issues as well. Many technologies remain expensive and unaffordable, hence define suggestions about the polarization of technologies to meet Africa's future needs today. If technologies are expensive, and bidding becomes slow and uneven, hence affecting future use and encouraging continual dependencies in Africa, 
non technological independence advocated by sustainable development. Also, the lack of political will, corruption, transparent institutions, and the lack of access to basic services like education, healthcare, basic utilities, or even security affect negatively an enabling environment for African sustainable development. Many Western scholars actually talk about patrimonialism as a deterrent to sustainable development. But I think it is mutated patrimonialism that is responsible, not patrimonialism. Because I think there are many African paternalistic systems or cultures that are progressive and that show places for sustainable development. So the conclusion, Africa needs rights this inclusive, participatory, pro-poor, eco-friendly, strategic, economic, and interest-based approaches to sustainable development. These approaches can only work in a highly technological, innovative, transparent, politically and economically motivated environment or sub-environments in Africa. This is possible when biological diversity and cultural diversity are put in focus in development interventions and when Africa understands the interests of other stakeholders within and outside Africa towards a sustainable development. Knowing can only be possible in an educated and healthy society where there is a guarantee of rights and access to benefits that flow from resources. This setting needs good governance of world. It needs understanding the agendas of all stakeholders, including donors, investors, conservators, countries, international non-governmental organizations, foreign and regional governments. And it should be based on unbiased strategic research, strategic planning, implementation and evaluation of devices aimed at African sustainable development. So there are a couple of literature you could like, the United Nations 1987 report of the World Commission on Environment and Development, and the case of strong sustainability, and a couple of others. And I invite you to watch my interview on good governance, and I have a book, I I book on good governance, and my interview with the Gambian Minister for um, Social Welfare and Women Affairs, Patumata Kambanjan, they are also online. So, um, with that, I will be telling you thank you very much. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. And then the first question.
for the African Center for Community and Development. I have been reporting on the Conference on Sustainable Strategies and Practices for Development and on the workshop Fighting Poverty and Engaging Conservation through Sounds 2010. Thank you very much. And uh, you just listen to a young girl who was saying that the Nigerian community here is totally very angry. Because all of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who went to several schools Thank to make your academic genesis was at the government college, Ujeli. Go, go, gather, uh, destroy their food. Yeah, they, uh, with the camp, and, uh, and uh, that other camp, the Tongo camp, you don't compensate everybody. But you know, And we shall also be very interested in this point at more than time. Some lives are meaningful. Some are empty. Lives that are meaningful with too much meaning and riches to offer humankind. No, after some of these earthly adventures and more, one can still find footprints of these great lives on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening. You're welcome to the program Green Planet.